Hello, everyone. This is Harmeet Singh. It's an honor to be here speaking with you about a topic that is getting more and more attention across the corporate world, ESG and the role of the CFO. I will focus on three main areas. First, how the pandemic is accelerating shifts in the business world, including the importance of integrating ESG into company strategy. Second, the business case for sustainability, which has never been stronger. And third, the role CFOs can and should play in this area. I should note, I often use ESG and sustainability interchangeably because the letters E, S, and G describe systems that for us fall under the larger banner of sustainability, which has social and environmental elements and is held together by governance systems that guide our strategy. Actually, I often think of it as EESG, with an extra E for employees who are so important to everything we do. I say that to level set and define terms that can be opaque at times due to the lack of a common standard, something I'll discuss later. Let me start by saying a few things about we and how we integrate ESG into the fabric of Levi Strauss and company. For us, ESG is grounded in both our history and our awareness on what investors, employees, and the public expect from business today. We have a working philosophy called profits through principles that guides our actions. In essence, it means that how we make our products is as important as what we make. This isn't new. It's been part of the company and our values for many years. It pushes us to choose the harder right over the easier wrong and to strive to make an outsized impact on the world. But if this moment has taught us anything, it's that you have to be nimble, flexible, and ready to adapt. This is how you both meet the moment and build for the long term. That pandemic proves this point. It has accelerated many shifts that were already underway in our industry. I imagine many of you are seeing this too. We are seeing consumer behavior change in real time. We have to change with it. As consumers flock to digital platforms, we ramped up our e-commerce efforts which has been our fastest growing channel for the past two quarters. We rolled out omni-channel platforms like buying online, pickup in store, curbside pickup, and our new loyalty initiative. We also continue to diversify products, expand our retail footprint, and offer a more digitized, more tailored in-store experience. At the same time, we're using AI more than ever to drive value across our business. It helps us improve financial forecasting, set store assortments, and shape promotions. We've also launched programs on Instagram called 501 Live and use your voice that helps us connect with our fans and elevate the voice of advocates fighting for social and racial justice. The move to digital is not the only shift we are responding to. Consumers are thinking more than ever about sustainability. This plays to our strengths. We make products that are built to last. We have pioneered water saving finishing techniques, programs to keep hazardous chemicals out of our supply chain and material innovations like cottonized hemp. We continue to drive our commitment to science-based targets on climate. We continue to advocate for policies that can lead to a, a just transition to a clean energy economy. And we are now talking directly to consumers about buying better, buying less, and extending the life of the garments through efforts like our in-store tailor shops and our new secondhand buyback and re-commerce program. 
This is all part of driving towards more sustainable, more circular products and practices that meet the expectations and the demands of today's consumers. From the outset of the pandemic, we talked about wanting to emerge stronger from this crisis. In those early days, we focused on cash preservation, ensuring our business operations. We did what many of you probably did, cut travel, cut executive salaries, and make sure we could in fact get through this. But we also knew that we had to be thinking more and more about business performance. It also had to be about how we treated our people, keeping them as safe and healthy as possible. This included extending paid sick leave to all US-based employees, including part-time workers, because no one should have to choose between their health and a paycheck. And when we had to go through a round of layoffs, which was extremely difficult on a human level, we tried to do it in the best possible way. Guided by our values, we provided people with a year of access to healthcare and other forms of assistance to help them through this tough time. Now with everyone stressed to the limits, we've instituted meeting-free Fridays and made the last Friday of every month a company holiday so people can breathe a little, look after their families and their own well-being and come back refreshed. We knew that to emerge stronger, we had to become more diverse at all levels. So we made a number of commitments that we know will make us better top to bottom. We knew too that we had to keep using our voice on issues like social and racial justice, voting, climate change, and gun violence prevention. We have done so in response to the killing of George Floyd as a founder of the Time to Vote Coalition and as a member of the We Are Still In movement, committed to the principles of the Paris Agreement on climate change. We think this is the right thing to do, but there are clear business imperatives to this work, which of course is top of mind for me in my role. We used to talk about maintaining a license to operate by being a good corporate citizen. Now we talk about securing a license to grow by delivering values to communities and actively trying to make the world a better place. This is another trend that has accelerated. With the pandemic appending lives, livelihoods, and industries, we know that we have to earn that license to grow, just as we have to earn the right to be the brand people turn to in this moment because of the quality of our products, our values, and our sustainability commitments. And for my part, my responsibilities as CFO feed into one of our overall company goals, which is to build a company that not only can last another 167 years, but is worthy of doing so. Our sustainability strategies and our broader ESG approach is critical to this work. It is more critical to my work than it's ever been. That's part of a larger shift we have seen in recent years, where the role of the CFO has evolved enormously with regard to sustainability. I think most of us see it now. Sustainability is essential to our operations, our performance, and our strategy to create long-term value for all stakeholders. This approach can add costs in the short term. That's not something CFOs traditionally want to hear. We've been conditioned to not spend money, to stay away from things that don't offer near-term payback. But this is a different world. The modern CFO must be patient, disciplined, and think about the long term. We must understand that payback will come over time. We must reallocate resources, cut from unproductive areas, and allocate in ESG initiatives to meet our stakeholders, our employees, our consumers, and a growing number of investors where they are. It's the magic of the end part of the CFO growth mindset that I think is essential in today's environment. Take our wealth thread line, for instance. It's like a living R&D lab where our designers and our innovators think about what's possible 
when sustainability is the top consideration at every stage of the design and the manufacturing process. With WellThread, we can make products in smaller batches to demonstrate proof of concept season by season. Then we scale innovations like hemp that's treated to feel like cotton or jeans that are made from recycled denim and organic cotton, and that can be recycled themselves. This is not a low cost venture. It takes time, years in some cases, to realize the full potential, but it helps set the direction for the entire organization. The hemp I mentioned needs less water and chemicals to cultivate when compared to conventional cotton. We're now integrating it into our mainline products and our marketing teams are talking about it with our consumers. The way I see it, I would not be doing my job if I weren't supporting our sustainability work, but it goes deeper than that. Soon after I started at the company, I visited factories in Turkey and Vietnam. I spent time with the people who make our products. I saw what their work and the facilities meant to their communities. I had a sense of it from growing up in India too. How companies conduct themselves, how they work to reduce water usage, how they make sure workers are treated well. This means a great deal to those communities. Seeing that up close made the human dimension of this work very clear. To make it happen, finance people must work side by side with their sustainability counterparts, showing them, for instance, that factories that implement our worker well being programs have seen a four to one return on investment, or that suppliers who made capital investments to improve their sustainability performance with financing from the IFC that we help set up both cut emissions and rely savings on operating costs. We believe our value and values are linked. Our sustainability efforts makes us a better company. They help us manage risk and enhance our operation and reputation, which is critical to earning that license to grow. When managed right, it also improves productivity in our supply chain and spurs growth, innovation, and profitability. Take FLX, which we also call Future Finish. It's a laser-based finishing technology we are implementing with a number of our suppliers. It began with a simple question. How can we remove more chemicals from our supply chain and turn into an agility model that stands to not only transform our in business, but also enhance our profitability while accomplishing its goal of vastly reducing the chemicals needed in the finishing process. We have a responsibility to return value to all our stakeholders through principal investments consistent with our values. I take that very seriously. For too long and incorrectly, it was believed that investments like this were not in line with optimal business performance. But the data is in, folks, and we're seeing a different picture. What we're seeing is that companies with better ESG ratings outperform competitors and set themselves up for future success. Our experience has taught us that values align investments end up being best for top and bottom lines. BlackRock and others have found that ESG focused investments are more resilient to downturns. They help companies establish stronger relationships with the full range of stakeholders and deliver stronger returns as well. We also know that sustainability drives innovation, enabling sustainable growth and nurturing those same stakeholder relationships. I mentioned WellThread and Future Finish. I can also point to our worker well-being programs, which have helped suppliers reduce absenteeism and improve productivity. Our waterless finishing techniques, which has saved more than 3.5 billion liters of water since they were introduced. By reducing water consumption, they also improve gross margins. We made them open source too, so others, even our competitors could use them. And, and, and we continue to report our progress openly and transparently. This makes us a stronger company and puts us in a position 
to respond to stakeholder needs and concerns. And it aligns us with the expectation and demands we are seeing from consumers, especially Generation Z. In so many ways, this is the future. To optimize this in an organization, I think of it in terms of a pyramid with three tiers. At the bottom, you must have truly sustainable practices along with a strong sustainability leaders, passionate advocates for the work who can make this business case for it. This is foundational. It, this is where it all begins. On the second tier, you need strong business partnerships and engagement between your sustainability professionals and the people who oversee product, supply chain, design, marketing, and many other departments, as well as the finance teams. And at the top, you need to demonstrate the value that this work creates for all stakeholders. It's something you must make clear to your own senior leaders, including the board, and to public and private investors who are incorporating ESG initiatives into their evaluations. The CFO and the CEO can champion this work. We can also advocate in public for the things we are doing in our business. For some time, I've been involved with Accounting for Sustainability, an organization founded by His Royal Highness, Prince Charles, to bring together CFOs to serve as sustainability and ESG advocates. I helped launch the US chapter last year. Since then, I've spoken about this work at the Corporate Eco Forum, attended meetings with His Royal Highness and other CFOs, and facilitated an ESG session at the Wall Street Journal CFO Forum. At each stop, I feel the momentum is growing. But we want more CFOs to participate across industries, across the US. So if anyone out there is interested in joining, please do let me know. Before I close, one thing I believe we can all advocate for is a common set of ESG reporting standards. This will entail working with the SEC and other organizations. It will enable us to develop common disclosure requirements so we can all work off the same standard, report the same metric, and drive towards the same outcome. They do this in Europe, we should too. For our part, we believe that our greatest legacy is that we build and what we pass on to the younger generations who are demanding better from us. There is a great deal of work to be done in the space, but there is so much opportunity for our businesses, our communities, and our planet. That's why it is so important. That's why this is so exciting. That is why we need to do the work and demonstrate progress. I'd like to thank the Integrate organizers for giving me this stage and thank all of you for listening. I very much look forward to carrying on this conversation in the days to come. Thank you and stay safe. Cheers.